In this edition of Hoofbeats Tack to Track, presented by Jax, we learn how to properly bathe the racehorse after training or racing. Here, trainer Casey Coleman and caretaker Nadine Bell demonstrate on two-year-old Colt Pacer kissing well. This horse just finished training a mile in 224 this morning, and his name's Kissing Well, a well-said Colt. Um, Nadine's bathing him off right now. Every day they all get bathed off. Uh, first, she does them in warm water, rinses his whole entire body, gets all the mud off and sweat. And then she's going to start sponging them down here with uh, some shampoos. Um, and then she'll have to rinse him again to obviously get all the soap off of them. When she's done that, we use what's called a scraper. And we scrape all the, wetter off, all the water off of him. And then she'll towel them down to help dry them off even a little more, just like a human. Yeah, get in the shower, rinse yourself, use some shampoo, soap yourself, rinse it again, and uh, then you towel off. So I make uh, all my grooms, uh, I want every single horse, uh, their foot lifted up and sprayed under because obviously when they have a shoe on and a hoof you can't get the mud when they're just standing flat on the ground you won't get that mud and that will cause uh, abscesses quarter cracks um, bad things with their feet so we pick all four feet up spray out all the mud and dirt after they train also every day you don't want to get the water in their in their ears so usually we'll slow the water pressure down when you're doing their heads and you definitely don't want to get it in their ear if you get it in their ear which does happen time to time it's uh, it hurts they don't like it so we try our best not to get the water into their ears some horses end up having, an, like if they have a fungus or an infection on them, they need special soaps like iodine soaps and antifungal soap, stuff like that. Um, so they might get extra special baths and when they get a fungus, they usually have their very own bath pail sponge. Nothing can touch the other horses because a lot of those funguses, something like ringworm, um, when one horse gets it, it can spread like wildfire. Right now she's just totally soaping them, rinsing them down, making sure that she gets all the sweat marks and let's say any kind of mud or fungus where it's a nice day obviously today so he's not too muddy which makes it easier uh, days when it rains and it's muddy like uh, these horses come in and you don't even know what color they are like they're uh, it's it's pretty messy when it rains so let's say we're very grateful when it's good weather and they're not out there and that stuff if you're at a track like say uh, Pocono Downs or Lexington when it rains it's that red clay kind of surface they have I'm telling you it takes these guys I bet it almost takes them half hour to clean them properly they got to keep getting more buckets and buckets and it just doesn't come off it's like cemented on them so she was just spraying down his head, getting the soap off his head, and like I said, being very careful not to get his ears. And uh, that's that's very important. Somebody that's new to bath and a horse, if you turn that water in their ear, um, they're not going to like it at all. It hurts. They'll start shaking their head and going crazy. He's now rinsing all the soap suds off of them. And uh, it's very important to get all the soap off because if you leave, if sometimes they don't have the suds completely off the horse and it will blister them. It, uh, it'll usually, again, cause some sort of a skin infection and it will definitely blister them. Some guys, when they're scraping them off after, you'll see they still have soap suds. And if you see that, you should grab your buckets or your hose or whatever and keep rinsing the horse because you definitely got to get all the suds off or it, it, it'll itch and irritate them and end up causing a blister on the horse, which is definitely not a good thing. So yeah, she's now scraping them, and uh, like I said, his bath is finished, he's totally clean, and she's just getting all that excess water off of him right now, and uh, that's, you can't just leave them dripping wet, or let's say they'll, they'll get a cold, a chill, they'll never dry, so she's totally scraping them off right now, making sure there's no soap left on them and uh, once she's finished that she'll towel him off and he'll get a blanket on for only about probably 20 minutes or so after because it, it's pretty warm out today so he'll just have enough to help his kidneys out and help him cool out and then we'll take that off of him because it's pretty warm today it's very important like some people when it's too hot don't put one on at all i hate that because i think they got it like they just finished going a big train a mile and they're still hot and i just uh if anything i'll put just a big towel over their kidneys if it's really really hot and maybe a fly sheet on them uh, now this is his cooler, I call these uh, terry cloth coolers, and it's it's basically like a towel. It's like a large towel made into a blanket form, and it just really helps them cool out properly. There are some blankets that like the horses literally will sweat under them. They're made out of like cotton and stuff, and you put them on and the horses literally, you'll go look at the horse another 30, 40 minutes later, and it's sweating underneath because it's just too heavy of a material, whereas this will cool them out properly. So he's all done his bath now and uh, she's going to take him back over to his house and he'll have some water and hay and cool out and he's all done until we put him away later this afternoon. He'll have probably about two hours that he can just relax, eat hay, drink water and then he'll come out and get put away later on this afternoon.